to continue on our study of the number system for the 8th grade Common Core Standards, we are going to continue working with rational and irrational numbers. In particular, what I would like for us to do is, in this standard, use rational approximations of irrational numbers to compare the size of irrational numbers. To compare the size means to figure out which one's greater and which one's least, less, lesser. Um, so we have, but we're going to use rational approximations, meaning we're going to approximate the value of the irrational numbers with rational numbers. And then um, I would like to just take a moment to briefly locate them approximately on the number line diagram, just to show you how you can figure out basically where, um, how to represent the value of the irrational number on the number line. We'll start with square root 16 just to remind ourselves what does it mean to take the square root of something. We know that the square root of 16 equals 4 or negative 4. We know that because 4 times 4 equals 16, and so does negative 4 times negative 4. That also equals 16. So it's a number multiplied by itself that will equal that number inside the square root. So if we know that, what do we do? Let me back up a little bit to figure out the value of uh, let's say square root of 3. Square root of 3 is showing us some value that we can't really accurately represent with a rational number because we can't express that as a ratio of let's say two integers, something like three-fourths. Okay, we can't do that uh, because when we take when we try and figure out some number multiplied by itself that equals 3, there isn't an integer that you can multiply by itself to equal 3. If you were to look at 1 times 1, 1 times 1 would equal 1. That doesn't equal 3. How about 2? If we did 2 times 2, that would equal 4. 4 is a number greater than 3. So we know that the square root of 3 is going to fall somewhere in between these two values. Now, if I were to write the comparison of square root of 3, knowing this information, I could write that the square root of 1 is less than the square root of 3, which is also less than the square root of 4. Now, to simplify this a little bit, that means I would have 1 is the less than square root of 3, which is less than 2. Now, for now, as part of this explanation, we're going to ignore that square root of 4 also has the value of negative 2, and square root of 1 also has the value of negative 1. Let's not talk about the negative uh, solutions for now. Let's just talk about the positive solutions. If we were only to look at the positive solutions, square root of 3, the value of square root of 3, whatever that crazy value is, that that decimal expansion that goes on forever represents, falls somewhere between 1 and 2. If we were to look at that on the number line, what that's telling us is somewhere between 1 and 2, and we can just basically randomly put an x right there, is where the, square, the value of square root of 3 equals. Now the problem is we don't know exactly where that point is. Is it closer to 1? Is it closer to 2? That's something I'll address in another video. But for now, it's helpful to know that the square root of 3, the value of it, is more than 1, but less than 2. It falls somewhere in the middle there. Okay, so let's look at the square root of 11. 11 is also a prime number, and that uh, a square root of prime number, we know from another video that I've done, that we always will end up with an irrational number. So let's just see if we can approximate, well, what is the value of square root of 11? Uh, if we can think about two, first of all, we're looking for an integer times itself that gets close to equaling 11. 2 times 2 equals 4. 4 is kind of a ways away from 11, so let's try 3. 3 times 3 equals 9. 9 is a lot closer to 11, but it's not quite there. Let's try 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 now has passed 11. 
So now we can see that the square root of 11 falls somewhere in between the values of 9 and 16. I could write that as a comparison statement as such. Square root of 9 is less than square root of 11. Again, we're only looking at positive solutions, which then is less than square root of 16. That would tell me that if I only look at the positive solutions, 3 is what square root of 9 would equal, which is less than square root of 11, which is less than square root of 16 is 4 as the positive solution. So if I put that on a number line again, and I'm not going to write all the other numbers before 3, but somewhere between 3 and 4 is where the value of square root of 11 falls. And so a lot of times people will estimate when they say, okay, I need to know the square root of 11, um, and they'll estimate, and they'll either say it's 3 or it's 4. But what we really know is it falls somewhere in the middle there. And there's a method to figure out kind of closer where you would put that point. Is it closer to 3 or is it closer to 4? Let's try square root of 17. Square root of 17, again, 17 is a prime number. So we need to think of an integer by times itself that equals a number very close to 17. Now, in this last problem, we noticed that when we did 4 times 4, it equals 16. 16 is very close to 17. I might just start with that one right there. 4 times 4 is 16. And just to see how far away square root of 17 is from the next number up, I'm going to do 5 times 5 equals 25. Now, what I can tell right away is that 17 is a lot closer to 16 than it is to 25. So most likely in the number line, the value of square root of 17 is going to fall a lot closer to 16, um, I'm sorry, to uh, 4 than it is to 5. So let's write this comparison statement. And one thing I want you to pay attention to is I've been writing the comparison statement, first of all, with the square root, of, the square root values all the way across and then simplifying where I can so I can figure out what the value of that irrational number is. Um, we have to be careful not to mix up, like I almost just did a little while ago when I was explaining this, the integer um, values from the um, square root values. Uh, so for instance, I need to make sure I write square root of 16 is less than square root of 17, which is less than square root of 25. I don't want to write square root of 4 is less than square root of 17, which is less than square root of 5. That can definitely get you the wrong values. Um, now, when I take the square root of 16, that I can do. There is a solution. If I only write the positive solution, I get 4. 4 is less than square root of 17. I can't solve to, a whole, to an integer. And then square root of uh, 25, which will get me 5 if I only look at the positive solution. So I'm seeing that square root of 17 falls somewhere between 4 and 5. My guess is, though, even though I can't see it in this statement, my guess is square root of 17 is a lot closer to 4 than it is to 5 because when I look up here to this statement, I have square root of 16 and square root of 17. 16 and 17 are numbers that are a lot closer together. So my number line, again, if I'm looking at the values, the value of square root of 17 and where it's going to fall somewhere between 4 and 5. If I had to estimate right now, my point might be closer to 4. Oops, can't barely get it on the number line. Then it is to 5. And that's just estimating. I don't really know the exact value until I do some more work with figuring out um, exactly what number times itself in decimal form would come close to equaling 17.